Well, I've had this notion for years that I was meant to have goats. And I went into ALBC in Pittsburgh one day and met Jeanette and said, I want goats. And I've been a goat woman since. <laughs> Gloria Schrader was introduced to these rare breed Spanish goats by the ALBC, or American Livestock Breeds Conservancy. The organization helps people like Schrader raise traditional or heritage livestock breeds. I appreciate the fact that they are all descended from the um, originals. They're very hardy, resistant to parasites, good moms. They're just a good, strong animal. According to the ALBC, since the 1940s, hundreds of traditional breeds have fallen out of favor with industrial farmers looking to maximize profit on wool, meat, and dairy production. Chuck Bassett and his organization want to ensure that less profitable, and therefore less popular breeds, don't disappear. The importance of ALBC's work is to ensure that the broadest amount or the fullest breadth of genetic diversity exists within agricultural animals. We got the engagement letter from Womble, Carlisle, Sandridge, and Rice. Our business, is, if you will, is we don't own animals and we don't own land. Our business really is intellectual capital. It's the knowledge and understanding behind the conservation of rare breeds that we make available to people who are uh, practitioners and uh, do on the ground conservation. All right, come on girls. Jeanette Berenger works with breeders on behalf of ALBC and also raises her own rare breed horses. She had a colt last year who we just sent down to South Carolina a few weeks ago. He's gonna be a hunting horse, uh, which is what this breed's all about. They're called marsh tackies, and they come from the low country of South Carolina, and uh, they're a woods horse. According to the ALBC, only 250 of these horses exist today. These horses have an amazing history. Uh, they've been in the low country for 400 years, these are the horses that the Swamp Fox, uh, Francis Marion, his soldiers rode these horses during the American Revolution. And uh, what's interesting and most people don't know is although Francis Marion was an amazing tactician, his men were riding the ultimate all-terrain vehicle, which is the Marsh Tacky. Uh, they have incredible stamina and they're adapted to the heat and the humidity of the Carolinas which is part of the reason why we got them for our farm, because we figure if we're going to practice what we preach, we might as well save what's in our own backyard. ALBC considers the Beringers and other rare breed farmers guardians of genetic diversity. The term we frequently use is that they are stewards of these animals. And in addition to having these uh, animals for agricultural purposes in a classic uh, farm type of setting, they also assume the responsibility of being stewards of these animals. Come on, baby. Woo -hoo. These are Belter Galloways. Originated in Scotland, and uh, give back. They trace them back all the way to the 1400s. Uh, at one time, uh, they was registered with uh, the Angus Cadillac, and when you shave the hair off, they got they do have an Angus head. Farrington Village keeps around 40 head of the belted Galloways on site, making it one of the largest concentrations for this rare breed in the country. I have a white stripe got down. I, not know. I tell people when we go to the fire that we've got blankets with all the top of them, holes cut in, we just paint them every once in a while. <laughs> Most of the farmers we visited praised their breed's ability to stave off parasites and birth easily. And while some of the animals are raised exclusively as pets, such as Gloria Schrader's Spanish goats, Others are raised for more traditional agricultural purposes. Come on. It's a hair sheep. The meat is exceptionally good. It's low in cholesterol, it's very tasty, and that's the, uh, that's the job of, the, of this uh, variety of sheep. They're, they're meat animals. Another day on the farm. Charles Taft is raising a breeding flock of St. Croix sheep at his farm in Bethania. He says there's an underlying connection between the growing trend in sustainable vegetable farming and sustainable husbandry practices. I believe that the small family farm is coming back. Uh, there are more and more people that are uh, moving uh, out of the cities, moving to 
small farmsteads that uh, help supply the increasing demand of local markets for locally grown uh, food, meats, produce. If you have never heard of ALBC and can't tell the difference between a Gulf Coast ram and a St. Croix lamb, chances are you've seen at least one rare breed, at least if you're a Tar Heel fan. How do you feel the team's going to do this year? <laughs> you think UNC's going to beat NC State? <laughs> Since 1924, the Hogan family has bred, raised, and painted 18 Dorset horned rams to serve as mascot for UNC Chapel Hill. The breed has less than 1,000 annual registrations in the U.S., few enough to be considered threatened on the ALBC's conservation priority list. These are particularly striking animals. They're very handsome, and they embody or represent what early American agriculture was all about. There's not only uh, conservation of biology there, there's conservation of culture.